Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I am doing another ranking video. My first one was for Mariana Zapata and now I'm doing Penelope Douglas, another favorite author of mine. I'm ranking all of her books from my least favorite to my top favorites. Penelope Douglas was a pretty easy choice for me to pick next to rank. I've read all of her books, I own all of her books, and she also doesn't have an insanely huge backlist so it's fairly easy for me to rank them and it won't take me forever to do so. If you know me, you know I love Penelope Douglas. I have read every single new release of hers ever since she released Bully. She is one of the few consistent authors for me. I have yet to give anything lower than four stars for her. Her writing and storytelling just works so well for me. So yes, I love her. I'm a Penelope Douglas fangirl, so I am super excited to share with you guys my rankings of her books. I am including Tris Six Venom in this ranking, which is her newest release. I got to read an early copy. I'm also including a couple novellas. Not all of them though. I'm excluding Adrenaline, which is Fall Away book 4.75, mainly because it's more of a collection of like bonus content and scenes and not actually like a cohesive novella. And if you've read Penelope Douglas, please let me know your own rankings as well. So let's just jump into it. Here is my ranking from worst to best of Penelope Douglas. Starting with my least favorite with my four stars, number 17, it's got to be one of the novellas. It is Conclave. This is book 3.5 in the Devil's Night series. It's like a lead up to Nightfall, the last book in the series, the last full length book in the series. The whole gang is basically trying to come up with a way to save Will in Nightfall. It does have a cohesive story here, it just won't make sense if you haven't read Devil's Night. But yeah, this one is number 17 for me. But I did like this one, it's obviously not a favorite, but I do love whenever Penelope Douglas gives us something extra in her series or for beloved characters. And number 16 is another Devil's Night novella. This is Fire Night, which is book 4.5 in the series. The only reason why I like this one slightly more than Conclave is because we get all the guys' point of views, plus a bonus one at the end that has me super curious about maybe a spinoff. But it's basically a Christmas novella, dark Christmas novella, Devil's Night style. It's great, it's perfect if you want to see all our four couples as parents and post happily ever after. Number 15 and my least favorite full-length book from Penelope Douglas is Nightfall. This is Will's book in the Devil's Night series, book four, the last full-length book in the series. I unfortunately did not love it as much as the rest of the series or, you know, as much as anything else from Penelope. I still liked it. I gave it four stars, but it was a bit too long for me. I wanted a bit more focus on Emery and Will. There was just so much going on, so much packed into this final book that the romance kind of fell to the side which was a shame because I loved Will and Emery. The anticipation for them was insane in the first three books and I loved the flashbacks of these two back when they were in high school. It was so angsty and emotional and Will was so freaking sweet back then. Not so much now but yeah this one unfortunately my least favorite full-length book. Number 14 on my list is Hideaway. I am pretty much getting through most of Devil's Night here. Not that it's not a great series because I do love it, but there are just some in the series that are better than others. Hideaway was not a favorite for me, mainly because I struggled a bit with Banks and Kai. I wasn't quite as invested in their romance as much as I wanted to be. I just never fell in love with either of their characters and actually loved them more in the later books in the series. Kai for me just felt too much like a background character compared to the other three horsemen. Number 13 is probably gonna get a little controversial because I know some of you are gonna be like, like, I can't believe that you ranked it so low. And I know this book is a lot of people's top three, but it is Punk 57. This one was a four star read for me. I've only read it once though, so maybe if I do choose to reread again or read listen to it, I might change my ranking and my rating. This is one of Penelope's high school romances, new adult high school romances about Misha and Ryan. I remember it being very emo and angsty and maybe that's why I couldn't get into it at the time. I just wasn't in the perfect mood for that. I did love the setup of it though with them being pen pals and their teachers matching them up because they think that they're 
the same gender. Another reason why it's not ranked higher is because I don't actually remember that much from it except for the whole anal scene which I think was in the truck. That I mean you can't really forget that scene anyway but I totally forgot they had some pretty important friends too. Penelope Douglas wrote some bonus content for those friends for that trio of friends and I had no idea who they were so this one is sadly not a top favorite of mine even though I know a lot of you love it. Number 12 is the new release Trisixenum which is Penelope's first FF romance. It's a new adult high school romance and only Penelope Douglas would be able to drag me happily back to a high school set book. This is part of my four stars from Penelope though it is my favorite of the four stars. I liked it slightly more than Punk. It's not really surprising that I rank these two so close because they have really similar vibes. It's another emo-y kind of depressing read. There's lots of heavier topics tackled here like suicide, death of a family, homophobia. It's a poor girl and rich girl kind of situation. The poor girl Olivia is out whereas Clay the rich girl is not and kind of in denial about it. This one I will admit was a bit of a struggle for me to get into in the beginning. It's a bully romance where Clay has made Liv's life hell for the past three four years all throughout high school and the hate is real. It is very much enemies to lovers. I have to put this one slightly above punk though because I love the ending so much. It's definitely my favorite part about the book and I also love the whole cast of characters. Liv's brothers were all so memorable especially her oldest brother. It took me a while to warm up to Clay and Liv but once I did I love these two. All the angst and emotions and intensity it was so well written. So far these have been my four star reads and now we're moving on to the 4.5s and I only have two of them. Falling Away is number 11. This one is Jax and Casey's book and as much as I love these two and love their book it is sadly my least favorite of the Fall Away series. I love Jax so much and Casey slash Juliet. Her character development was fantastic. It's the last book in the series so the characters aren't quite in high school anymore. They are new neighbors so they're back in each other's lives and I actually love that Jax is younger than Casey and I love the fact that Casey is pretty much the one for him and he's known it since forever. Like it's always been her and I am such a sucker for that. Number 10 on my list is Misconduct which is my other four and a half star read though by now I could probably bump it up to five because I've reread it so many times and I love it. I really do. It's like a forbidden teacher student's father romance. So this is Tyler and Easton's book and their forbidden romance is so freaking hot. I feel like this is one of Penelope's more underrated books and I wish it got more love, as much love as some of her other books because Tyler chef's kiss. He's like an older hot older man, single father, and the steam was fantastic. And now we're moving on to all of my five star reads which no surprise is my most common rating for Penelope Douglas. My numbers eight and nine are actually two novellas. The two novellas in the next flame paperback. It's got a flame and next to never and number nine for me is next to never which is Quinn's story, Quinn's novella. Quinn is Jared, Jax, and Maddox's half-sister. She's pretty much the baby of the family though in her novella she is a teenager now, an older teenager. There is no HEA, no happily ever after in Next to Never though. This novella is more like a prequel and a setup to Quinn's actual romance in the spin-off series which is the Hellbent series though unfortunately her book is not one of the first few books in the series but her future hero is Lucas who is quite older than her so age gap. Not that anything has happened yet because she's still young and underage. But Lucas was like a mentee of Maddox I believe so he has been a part of that friend group for a while. He's kind of flew the nest though, left them and left Quinn much to her devastation to find himself. It's such a fantastic prequel though setting up their whole romance because I am dying for their book. This novella also tells about the second chance romance between Quinn's parents who are Jared and Jax's mom and Maddox's father. I'm probably gonna reread this novella so I can prepare for the Hellbent series which I am crazy excited for. Number eight and the other novella in this paperback is A Flame which is like a fall away sequel. Jared and Tate broke up at the end of the series in Falling Away which caused so much uproar but they broke up because of college and careers and just like being in a point where they're changing and trying to discover what they want for themselves which does make sense but we do get their happily ever after in a flame. I loved a flame. I surprisingly was not one of the people who 
who got so mad when Tate and Jared broke up because I knew they would get back together. And of course they do in a flame. It's a great novella. It's sexy, exciting, all intense. Jared is back and determined to make Tate his again. Also, I love that we get to see the two other couples all happy and in love. These two novellas were five stars for me, but them being novellas, they are at the bottom of my five star list. Number seven on my list is Rival, which is book two in the Fall Away series. This one is Matic and Fallon's book. They have a step sibling enemies to lovers romance. So Rival is quite angsty and quite forbidden. They hate each other, but there's a lot of complicated history between them. There's so much emotional turmoil going on, so much hate and hurt. Rival being the follow up to Bully obviously had a lot to live up to. And for me, it really did. I really love this one. We're getting close to my top five now, but number six is Until You, which is Bully told from from Jared's point of view. I'm not gonna lie, during this period of romance from like 2011, 2012, I was a sucker for like male point of view written books of books that were already out and Penelope Douglas gave us what we wanted, gave us what we begged for, which was Jared's point of view. And I mean, Jared to this day is still one of my favorite heroes, one of my favorite book boyfriends. Jared is iconic. He's like the OG bully. So getting to know his thought process of what happened in Bully, it was exactly what I wanted. Now we're on to my top five and oh my god, it was so hard to try to rank these ones because I love them all with my whole heart but I gotta do it for this video right so number five for me is Credence this is one of her standalones and I would consider it dark-ish romance it's got the perfect stuck in a cabin with three gorgeous men up in the mountains vibes and if you're in a cabin alone with three men one of whom is the father of the other two what else can you do but bang them Credence is definitely Penelope Douglas's most out of your comfort zone kind of read. Not that it was uncomfortable or anything, but it was just so very different and unique. And it was like nothing else that she'd written before. I was obsessed with this book though. I was obsessed with Tiernan and who she would pick of the three men. There's Jake, the father, and his two sons, Noah and Caleb. I'm very happy with who she chose in the end, though I know a lot of people weren't. I loved it though, and I really hope Penelope Douglas writes some more books like this, like books that are just so very different. Number four for me, this one is actually really painful that it's not in my top three but so hard to rank them it's still one of my top favorite books but I mean so are the others but my number four is Corrupt also here is the exclusive Mystic Box hardcover Corrupt is book one in the Devil's Night series and the one that started it all a lot of people don't like Rika but I actually love her I love her and Michael the intensity between them is fantastic the fact that they've always wanted each other even though Rika was for a period with Michael's younger brother. That is kind of reminiscent of Falling Away and I still love it. It was Penelope's first dark romance. I reread it a couple of times and I love it every time. Now we're in my top three and honestly, depending on my mood, I could probably like switch these three around. But for my current mood, it puts Bully at number three. It's been a favorite for such a long time, but I will admit I haven't read it in quite a while. It's the OG Bully romance. It's the book that got me to love Penelope. Penelope Douglas, so I have a lot of nostalgic feelings for Bully. Surprisingly though, it didn't really spark in me a love for Bully romance in general, just jerk heroes. It's Jared and Tate's book. Tate is kick ass. I love her and Jared. <sighs> my man Jared. He's awful but I love him which can probably also be said for quite a lot of Penelope Douglas heroes but it is kind of bully romance where the hero is redeemed. You can forgive him. You can believe that he loves the heroine and won't ever hurt her again. I just have so much love for these two. We're getting into my last two books and you can probably guess what is left. My second top favorite Penelope Douglas book is Kill Switch mainly because Damon He's our favorite anti-hero, our favorite psychopath, and by our, I mean my. Damon's redemption arc was incredible. I reread it last year and was just blown away again. Winter was the perfect heroine for him. Like, these two are just so meant to be. There's some revenge, a bit of second chance romance. It was just so perfect. And of course, my top favorite, my number one Penelope Douglas book so far 
is Birthday Girl. I think I've mentioned before that this one is probably my top favorite and I guess it still is. It is age gap forbidden romance perfection. It doesn't get more forbidden and exciting than falling for your ex-boyfriend's dad, your ex-boyfriend's much hotter dad. Pike, Daddy Pike is everything you'd want in an older hero. Jordan is so much more mature. She seems a lot older than she actually is, which is why this big age difference where he's like almost twice her age just works. There's some good angst, lots of good sex. It was so romantic too like if you're not into dark romance this one is perfect to read I love rereading this one too it's probably my most reread book of Penelope's so birthday girl definitely deserves my number one spot that's my ranking of all 17 books including some novellas from Penelope Douglas again let me know your rankings for her books I'm so excited to see them and I'm also really excited to see how you guys like Tris Six Venom and obviously if you haven't read Penelope Douglas yet you should get on that that's it for me today though Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!